All right, um, so this is your tip number one. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with a PowerPoint presentation. We're just gonna, we're gonna talk and if we could go live in a few minutes, we will to a few sites. You definitely wanna be on LinkedIn. You guys, people on LinkedIn are professionals. They're the people who are earning money. They are the people who are always relocating. They are people who are connected to people who are relocating to this area. So you wanna be on LinkedIn. And the reason why you wanna stay on there and post five days a week, which is not too much. I've been doing it since 2008. Posting five days a week, 2008 on LinkedIn. You wanna do it because in this day and age, you wanna just stay top of mind. You also wanna look at it, one of the things I've said in my books is that when you log into these platforms, you have to look at them as a networking event. So just think, I'm gonna take 10 to 15 minutes every day and I'm gonna log into LinkedIn and I'm just gonna network. I'm gonna find out what my, my friends are doing. I'm gonna find out what my network is doing. I'm gonna, you're gonna learn something when you go through your feed. You're gonna see what the conversation is. You wanna be part of that. Um, so, but I invite you to just share something about you and your, and your business, um, you know, just sort of what's going on, etc. cetera. Um, so every day get on there and, um, share some, share a tip, you know, I, cause I'm not in real estate. What's going on in the Northern Virginia market right now? I don't know. I'd love for you to share that. Um, share, you know, obviously share one of your listings. Um, share something that you're doing like today you could have said i'm looking forward today to getting on a, a live webinar with um dallas area association of real estate professionals um, to learn more about social media by the way are you on social media i'd love to connect to you because <laughs> i'm learning about it so these are things that you can do um so get on linkedin every day um so i'm going to stop right here what questions do, what has stopped you from getting on linkedin Anyone want to be brave and, and ask? Time. And, and sometimes it's a challenge to get out and get everything on Facebook where mm. you know that all of the, most of the agents are. Okay. Um, connecting on LinkedIn. Talk about that. Like who should be, with whom should you be connected? If people, if I don't know people, mm -hmm. I'm not usually, especially if it's the 20,000th lender that I've never heard of before. Yeah. Asking to connect. I'm not likely to do it because I don't want it to appear like it's an endorsement. Is yeah. Okay. Mindset. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So if you're, if you're lost, okay. First of all, connect to me. Okay. Once you connect to me on social media, you're going to see other people that are in my feed. I want you to reach out and if you see someone that's posted something interesting saying, oh, you know, I really enjoyed your post today. I'd love to connect. Just do it that way. You do, you want to start connecting to people that are not in your industry, right? You want to connect to just regular consumers out there because they could be potential clients um, and referral partners or business champions of yours. Um, look for people who own um, local restaurants, connect to them. Look for people who own local businesses in your area. Let's say you're in Reston and you really focus on Reston. Look for business owners in Reston. You could um, you know, look for company leaders. Type in company names that are in Reston in the LinkedIn bar. Look for some of those names that pop up of people that work for those companies and just reach out and just say, hey, uh, Jennifer, I see you work at XYZ Company in Reston. I'd love to connect. It's really all you have to write. You're gonna be connected that way. And typically they will take your, your connection and then, now, then they'll now start seeing your updates in the feed and you'll start seeing theirs and I want you to start liking their updates, et cetera, and just start, you start networking that way. Does that help? No. Okay, tell me where we're getting stuck. I'm not finding you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Jennifer, I'm finding a bunch of Jennifer Abernathy's on my spelling. Make sure you're, you, maybe you're spelling it, it's N-E-T-H-Y, Jennifer Abernathy. Yep, that might work. Okay. Right. Welcome, welcome. And we'll go over. So if that helps you guys, look at LinkedIn. See, a lot of this has to do with mindset. Look at LinkedIn as I'm going in, I'm going to spend 15 minutes a day to go in there and network. I'm going to connect to people who are in the area that I want to focus on. I'm going to connect to local business meet leaders. I'm going to connect to directors of chambers of commerce. I'm going to connect to the rotary professionals. I'm going to connect to people who are in women's groups that I belong to. Okay. That way you can start expanding your network, connect to local restaurant owners, you know, again, local businesses, et cetera. They're all on there. And it is a gold mine. 
Um, in fact, if we can, let's see, I think I have something marked here for LinkedIn. Okay, we'll, we'll go. We'll go over to LinkedIn here in a second. We'll go to LinkedIn. Um, but I wanted to ask. So, and you want to be posting to, every day. You know, share share a tip, share a real estate tip, share the day in the life, something that you're working on, share a recommendation. Did you just get out to a local Virginia winery and and enjoy it? Give them a shout out. Um, local dry cleaner, give them a shout out. Be part of the community. There's a local 5K race. I don't know, I said we're post COVID, so it's hard to, we're in COVID, so some, some of these things have changed. But anything that you can do, a charity that you want to recommend, give them a shout out. So we don't want to always make it about you. Um, use LinkedIn to ask a question of your network, ask a question of people. Um, so you can use it for marketing intelligence. It's not just a real estate question, just ask a question in general and just see what kind of responses you get. Okay? It definitely works. The other thing I want you to start thinking about is video on LinkedIn. How about every Friday or Thursday or Wednesday or Tuesday, whenever it is, do a one minute video, share a real estate tip. Again, do a shout out to somebody else. The reason why I want you to start doing video is because videos really get seen in the feed so much more than the regular posts. They're just honoring the videos much more than they are regular posts. So. We're getting comfortable in video more and more by doing these Zooms. So um, start doing a video, just use your iPhone. Boom, post it up when you're done and um, it'll be up there. And you'll be shocked at how many views you'll get. And it, it could be 50, it could be 500. But that's 50 more people that have heard from you that day that wouldn't have heard from you otherwise. So you wanna do that because guess what? Your other real estate competitors are doing it. Okay, so um, so use it for that. Okay. Can I ask a question oh, about video? Yeah. I'm sorry about Bobby. About which one? Yeah, about video. Um, yeah. So, how would a video that you post on Facebook differ from what you would post on LinkedIn, or can you use the same one? I can use the same one. You can use the same. Yeah, use the same one. Concern of mine is I'm very active on Facebook, and that's why introducing LinkedIn makes me really nervous. That oh. I, I, I'm going to have to do two separate you know, like uh, approaches. Yeah, you because might, LinkedIn is a little bit more buttoned up. Right. It is a little bit more buttoned up, so you might want to think about that. Um, and think about, you know what, don't think of it as a burden. Think of it as, you know what, this is going to expand my network. It's going to expand my views. It's going to help more people know who I am and get to know yes. me. And if you just switch that mindset, and yeah, just it, LinkedIn is a little bit more buttoned up than Facebook, but I tend to be a little bit more formal on Facebook. So if you do it that way, you can do the same video. So you could, yeah, okay, you could use the same Yeah, one. yeah. In fact, um, I'll show you guys in a second a video I did the other day on Facebook. And again, Facebook also loves video. And fi almost 500 people saw my video. I did a Facebook Live and I just shared some Zoom tips. You also have to think about Zoom as a social network. So we can talk about that as well. But Zoom is now a new social network. When you get on these calls, people are networking. They're checking you out. They're seeing all the faces. They're looking at your background. They're seeing if you're someone they want to do business with. Um, so you need to also think about Zoom as a social marketing channel, okay? Anytime you're out there. All right. Um, okay, any other questions about LinkedIn before we, and, and I will show you, um, show you some examples of LinkedIn in a second, but. Um, not, not a question. Sorry, Rich. Go ahead. Not, not a question, but I always looked at LinkedIn and a lot of people, especially uh, up until recently, it's kind of like your online curriculum vitae. It's it's your resume, um, and it's more of a bit more professional as opposed to you know you had a beautiful cake today after your lunch um, that you may see more on Facebook. It's true. It's starting to get a little bit more relaxed in terms of that. People sharing a little bit more about um, you know their not so much their personal lives but their business lives versus just being very completely buttoned up um, with business. So it is listening up quite a bit. People are sharing more video conversations, video thoughts. Um, they're sharing their favorite books. Um, they're sharing articles that they've read. So those are some professional ways to use it without saying, hey, this is my five-year-old's birthday party, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I think it's also becoming a little bit more of a solicitation platform I get a request maybe three or four a day from some Bitcoin person. 
Um, and I used to always accept any business person coming in on Facebook. I would scrutinize it. If a business person reached out to me on LinkedIn, I would accept it. Now the next thing is I'm getting all of these direct messages. Hey, you want to buy this? You want to buy that? So that's become a little annoying, actually. It's very annoying. And I know what you mean. I can almost spot those people, you know, the web developers, you know, from <laughs> Istanbul, et cetera. And then they have the canned marketing messages that come out, which I'm so against. Um, so yeah, I think try to avoid those. Really focus on connecting to local business leaders, local businesses. Um, and then you also want to think national as well, because again, a lot of people move here. A lot of people move to this area. So it's, um, it's all about connections at the end of the day. Okay, so I think LinkedIn is a very, very powerful platform. In fact, um, let's go over there for one minute. And then I want to get, um, Barry, if you can, maybe at about 1120, flag me because we want to move to another platform after that. I want to make sure everyone gets a lot out of this. Okay. Can I ask it one more quick question? Yeah. Um, is ahead. it worth premium, worth doing, not doing? You know, I, uh, all these years I've been on LinkedIn and I've never done premium. So I'm going to say to you that um, LinkedIn premium is, is if, you, if you can afford it, you can do it. I think it's great, but it's not necessary. Not necessary. I'm going to agree with you, Jennifer. I actually did it uh, several months ago um, yeah. just to kind of see who's checking out my profile, but yeah. I, it's not worth the money. No, it's not. I've never done it. Let me just see if I can get into my LinkedIn here. I've got a lot of screens opened up. One second. Jennifer, I apologize. Um, I, I came on a little bit late, so you may have already spoken to this, but do you have a sense of effectiveness versus other platforms? LinkedIn is super effective for real estate agents because most of them aren't using it, so it's not crowded. People want to hear from you, people like me, because we don't know what's going on in the real estate market. We're thinking on down the line that we're going to want to buy something or we're going to want to sell. So we want to hear from you. We really do. It's not that it's not it's not crowded because a lot of the real real estate agents aren't aren't on here. Now, for those of you that know Ryan Serthant, he's a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. um, he goes wild on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. he goes wild on LinkedIn. And, you know, he's a top producer. So here's an example. They're asking a question about, do you prefer a townhouse or do you prefer a condo? What do you prefer? He got 137 likes, 23 con comments. This is what you want. You want engagement. Ask a, ask a question. Folks, do you, do you like living in, 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 the D, in Arlington or do you want to move out into the country? Ask us questions. Okay, and when I say us, I'm saying people who are non-real estate professionals. We want to participate, particularly right now. People are indoors. They're stuck inside. They're online. They want, to, they want to engage. And we're seeing more than ever right now, engagement is super high on social media because, again, people are inside and they want to connect. So invite them to connect, ask them questions, and you're going to start getting more leads. It's also going to set you up as a leader in the industry because you're asking a lot of questions and you're, you're talking about real estate all the time. Okay. Um, the other thing is be aware of your profile. Just update it here. Put as many things in this little box. This is called your professional headline. And so, um, you know, whatever you specialize in, maybe there's an area that you specialize in, a focus. Um, if you're available for speaking, um, whatever that is, let's put a bunch of things in this box so that people can, um, when they search for you, you pop up. Okay, because this is also helps with SEO. And what I did here is I put my first and last name in the first name box, and then I put my company in the last name box. Um, so that's another little hack that you can do um, that just helps you. Um, so when I'm in the feed, my name and my company is in the feed whenever I post. Okay, so um, definitely get a LinkedIn, you guys. I don't see enough of you on there. And it's, a, it's great because it's people who are working with money or the professionals. And they're going to have a job soon because, you know, hopefully this will all turn around. But there's a lot of people still working. A lot of people have money and a lot of people that are looking for homes and looking to move. Okay. And or have family members or know people that want to be moving to this area. Okay. Any other questions about LinkedIn? Okay. Let's stop the share for a second. All right. So LinkedIn, let's get on there and post five days a week. It's not too much. 
what I would also do is come back at the end of the day and go through your feed and like other people's uh, other people's posts as well. You don't want to just make it about you. You gotta, you know, kind of be engaged and network with other people in mind. Okay. All right. The next, if you can click your reactions button, how many people are using Facebook and you're posting daily in your personal feed for Facebook? Oh, I am. Okay. Are you posting on your business page on Facebook daily? Mm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So business pages right now don't get that much action. As you can see, they don't get seen that much in the algorithms. Oh, me, I see. Okay. Um, but your personal pages do. So I would encourage you to think of your Facebook personal page as more of the professional you. And um, we'll go over. Let me um, share my, my, my messy screen here. All right. Let me um, go to share. All right. Here we go. So I started on Facebook. I was one of the first people literally on Facebook for business back in 2006. And it really has done a lot for me. And I've kept my page. It's, it's um, yeah, I have some personal, but I pretty much use it as business networking. It's business networking on here. Um, so this morning I made the announcement that, you know, I'm speaking here today um, and, you know, talking to you guys. I also talk a lot about trends because I'm an um, innovations and trend forecaster, marketing futurist. And uh, this is kind of a cool trend that's coming. We're gonna see concerts at drive-ins. Um, drive-ins are coming back, which is, I think, something exciting, at least it's some place we can go, you know, without getting, risking getting sick. But I wanted to share with you, um, the other day I did a video about Zoom tips. And so here's the video that I did, and it got 497 views. And I did this on my personal page. So I'm gonna say to you, if you can go in, I just went in Facebook Live and, um, you know, it's very easy to do. Click that live button right there and you go live. And I did a video and that was four or 500 more people that wouldn't have heard from me had I not done that video. So it kind of keeps me top of mind. And I shared some Zoom tips, what you should be doing on Zoom. And so um, I'd say to you, think about once a week going live on, on Facebook and doing a quick video. It can be one minute long. Mine was under five minutes. Keep them short, don't go on and on, just, uh, and be yourself, be yourself, and you'll get better and better at it as time goes on. Any questions about Facebook? Okay, I'm gonna, gonna stop the share for a second, so I can kind of log back and forth. Okay, Facebook's good, you know, you need to be there. Um, uh, going back to LinkedIn for one quick second, I don't wanna forget to tell you, LinkedIn's gonna start adding a lot more features. So it's another reason to get back on there and start doing it more regularly. They're going to add LinkedIn stories and a bunch of other features are coming. So get there. Okay. Rich has got to go show some property. Good luck, Rich. Okay. All right. We're going to go now to Instagram. How many people are on Instagram? Mm -hmm. ah, Marsha, Marsha, put, Marsha I'll, I'll put your Instagram um, handle in the chat box so we can all follow you. Okay. All right. So Instagram, you guys are missing out if you're not on Instagram. You need to be on there. If anything, get on there now and just start watching what other people are doing. It keeps you connected. It keeps you connected to your friends. It keeps you connected to your community. It keeps you connected nationwide and what everyone's talking about. Um, it really gives you a sense of what the national conversation is out there from young people to older people. It's definitely aged up. There's all ages on there. Um, and so, you know, from, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say probably 17, 18, all the way up, you know, to in the 80s and 90s. Um, May Musk, Elon Musk's mother is on there. She's 72 and she's got a huge Instagram following. Well, she's um, yeah, mother. Huh? She's Elon yeah, Musk's mother. <laughs> she is, she is, but you know what? There are lots, you know what's funny? In the senior center, senior homes, retirement community, Instagram is very popular. Really? It gives, it gives them an, a view of the outside world. And so they can connect to people all over the world and see their videos and um, okay. learn about what pop culture, what people are talking about, and they are absolutely loving it. So <coughs> get on Instagram. Now, realtors at Instagram, just like when I started on social media back in 2006 and everyone thought I was crazy for getting on this thing called Facebook, 
On Instagram, realtors, I've been telling real estate agents this for the past three or four years. There are certain agents on there that are only doing their sales on Instagram. They're only selling their, 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 their houses on Instagram. Why? Because so many people are on it. In the days when we used to go to airports and shopping malls, if I would walk by people, and this is what I would do, being my industry, I kind of look down at their phones and see what they were looking at. Nine times out of 10, they were sitting there scrolling through their Instagram or Facebook. Or then it was Pinterest, but, and we'll talk about that too. You should be on Pinterest as well. But Instagram for sure. Get on there. I can't say it enough. Um, it's such a good platform. I'm going to go over there now. Let's see, I've got it bookmarked here. Let me show you some Instagrams. But, well, first of all, type in your questions or who has some questions about Instagram because I want to make sure I answer them. You have a question or reason why you haven't done it? Is it because maybe I don't know, you don't know how or you can't think of a reason why you would use it? Tanya? I have, I've gone on to see my kids stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm only following a few people and mm -hmm. I'm more of a stalker than I don't think I've ever posted mm -hmm. on Instagram. I post on Facebook all the time. And I guess maybe some of it was, um, maybe I was feeling I didn't want to be all real estate all the time. Maybe I just didn't want to have another platform to commit to. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, there are very few people I followed. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think you gotta, it's a mindset thing. You have to think about, you know what, my God, if I open an Instagram account and I got one sale from it this year, it would more than pay for itself. And with over 500 million people logging into Instagram daily, if you're posting really good content, great content, and making connections, connections lead to sales. So if you post on, should there be also be a business page on Instagram? I've seen it, some people post. Yeah, you can make it a business page. Uh huh. Yeah, you can make it a business page. You could you could set up a separate account if you wanted to. But just keep in mind, people are going to see they if they Google your name, they're going to see both accounts. So, so just I'm, so a business page isn't necessary, and it's it's only um, it's just get out there. It's personal and it's get out there. Because think about it, our personal and professional worlds have collided. Mm -hmm. And the younger people coming up, they mix both on one platform. So okay. again, you never want to post anything that you don't want people to see because you're oh, yeah. posting it and it's on the internet. <laughs> so people are going to see it. So I would say take your personal page right now and just start gearing it a little bit more towards real estate. You can still do both. You know, I do that. I just think I've uploaded a photo for that one. Yeah. Think and so let's... That. Jennifer, what's yours? Yeah, so follow me on, and um, so I've got two. I've got We Deliver Social. That's my social, uh, socially delivered agency. Okay, and then we've got, I've got Sales Lounge. Sales Lounge, which I'm going to start. I started out with that as just doing my photography on there. And you'll see me starting to switch more towards business on that. So Sales Lounge is probably my most popular one. Okay, so yeah, I'd love to connect. Okay, so I'm going to share screen here. Let me see if I can go over to um, a couple Instagrams real quick. One second. And I think I've got one bookmarked here. Yeah, okay. So this is Jade Mills. Jade Mills is um, the number one Coldwell Banker um, real estate agent. And that's her right there. And of course she's in, you know, out in California, but you don't have to have these $30 million homes, honestly, to be successful. Quite frankly, most people want to see the $200,000 or $300,000 condo. Okay. Because that's what most people can afford. So just to give you an example, she did a uh, uh, video. We are at my mom's $30 million listing in Brazil. It's gorgeous here. Mom, tell us about the market. Doing $30 million listings on Instagram. For under thirty million dollars, and it is spectacular. The market is amazing. All of a sudden, the floodgates opened. Everybody wants to see houses. Everybody's buying. They have to wear their masks. They have to sign coronavirus addendums, and off we go. It's great. Are you showing houses, opening houses? What are you doing? Yes, we're showing, opening, as long as everybody has on their masks and their gloves and their booties. We can show houses, and they have to sign the form. Make your appointments now. Yes. Okay. So let me, let's talk about that. That was less than one minute long. She had 4,200 people view that in the past 72 hours. And it's global. 
Why are they doing it? Because they're reaching people in China, Russia, everywhere, investors. So you have to think about when you post on these platforms, you're reaching people around the globe. And when you use these hashtags at the bottom, real estate, market, invest, Northern Virginia, DC Metro, you know, those are things that I teach you to do. People from all over the world, whether they're following you or not, can find you and they can see you. So again, you gotta think about how can I use this? Um, it's, again, you're in the business, you're in the business to sell and, and, and help people buy, buy homes, right? So you wanna get on these platforms. Say that, that, um, Instagram is very much a visual platform. Um, so images and videos are very much uh, both for this platform. Oh yes, it's all image and video. Yeah. And basically what people are, what I'm teaching in my master class is people are using this as creating their own TV channels on Instagram. It's called IGTV. You can actually create your own channel. And so there's so many creative things that can do and you guys that we can do and it's still in its infancy. So, you know, get on here, look at Jade Mills, look to see what she's doing. Um, and, um, you know, she's getting people from, you know, from all over on here. All right. So Instagram, Instagram is good. You must be on there. And please send me your Instagram handles um, so I can connect to you. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing right now. Right. Question about that. So what should the, how should the, um, I'm told the Instagram handles are different than in the other. So I, I really know not much about this. What, what kinds of things make a good Instagram handle? Well, like I like Marsha Cross's right here. Marsha Cross Realtor. It's got her name and real estate. I like Marsha Cross Real Estate. So if you could put your name with Realtor, you know, or if you have a little tagline that you use, Tanya, mm -hmm. um, maybe that. Um, but I think Marsha's kind of says it all. She's got her name and Realtor in there. Um, some people put uh, like Jennifer sells homes, homes by Jennifer or you know, homes by Tanya or whatever it is. Um, but it's kind of nice to have either realtor or homes or something like that in your, in your handle, but just your name is fine. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. So Instagram, we want to be on, I want to be cognizant of the time. So we have a lot more to do. Um, I want to go over to Twitter. How many people are using Twitter? Right. No. Right. No. Okay. Not using it. God, think Got about it, it you guys. You have all no. these platforms that you can reach hundreds of people, millions of people. All our time Twitter. on the platforms. <laughs> huh? I said I think I'm afraid to spend all my time on all those platforms. You got to do what I did in the beginning. You get on your phone, whether it's this or a stopwatch, and you say, "I'm giving myself 30 minutes. I'm giving myself 30 minutes a day." to do my networking. I'm gonna go on LinkedIn, again, it's a mindset. I'm gonna go on LinkedIn, I'm gonna put a post up. I'm gonna look through my feed. I'm gonna see what my other network people are doing. I'm gonna log into Twitter. I'm gonna put a post up. I'm gonna go through my feed. I'm gonna do an Instagram sometime today. I'm gonna to take a picture sometime today. I'm gonna to do that, you know, put it out there. So it's really just a mindset. Think about it, I mean, you've got access to hundreds, thousands, millions of people on these platforms. If you want to move product and if you want to seem current, that's a big thing. If you want to seem current and in the know, you need to be, I, I feel you need to be on these platforms, at least know about them and be, have an account on them so you can see what other people are doing. Okay. So let's go to Twitter and let's see, I don't think I have that bookmarked on here. So I'm going to give me one second here. We're gonna, um, da, da, da. all right, so we're gonna go to Twitter. Let me see if I have anything bookmarked for you. Okay. Do, 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 be with me, I got my TikTok bookmarked there, but we're gonna go to um, Twitter if we can. One second. My Instagram, okay. And one second, let me move this out of the way. I can't see it because the controls here. Ah, here we go. Okay. All right, so, all right, so Twitter. So I'm gonna go, so Twitter right now is the number one news service in the world. It's anything that breaks news-wise is gonna break on Twitter before it even hits the TV stations. So it's a number one news service. And so you wanna be, you know, you wanna be part of the conversation. 
Um, now, there's a lot of people doing videos. Okay, so here's Simon T. Bailey. He's a motivational speaker doing his, you know, one minute video each day. Um, obviously, you've got your political people on here. You've got people talking about, you know, what's going on right now with all the Black Lives Matter, etc. cetera. Um, but, but you can also use it as a um, source for leads. So I'm just gonna type in um, Virginia real estate in the search bar. Yeah, this spot, right? And I, in my classes, I teach people how to use Twitter as a leads tool. So you could go on here and just, you know, by these certain keywords, see what the conversation is. Now, Virginia real estate may or may not be the right keywords, but we try a few things, okay? Um, so here's the Washington Post. So you'd want to follow the Post real estate section. Okay, you can also find people to follow. Um, here's a real estate team in Herndon that has a live Q&A on Twitter every Tuesday and Friday. Are any of these people on our call? Oh, this is Central Virginia, it looks like. So you can kind of see what, what other agents are doing as well. What if you had your own tweet chat every Tuesday at 10.15 to 10.45? People could ask you questions. Um, this is what people are doing, okay? So um, let, me, let me see if I can find something else. Um, I'm just gonna type in real estate. I'm gonna type in the latest. And again, you can see things from all over, but you're going to see everything from yeah, YouTube videos to here's another agent. I don't know where she's located. Too many followers, but oh, she's Long and Foster, Mechanicsville, Virginia, putting up a video of a home. So real estate agents are on here. I do think they're not taking advantage of it enough. Um, Twitter is also getting ready to add a bunch of new bells and whistles, you guys. So again, we're talking a sentence. You just need to upload a sentence on here. It's not, not very long. Um, and it's a great place to get information, you know, about what's happening in, in your industry. Um, so I personally love Twitter, but it's not for everybody. So you have to pick your platforms, you know, that you like. Okay. I'm going to stop share for a second. So I, if I were setting up a Twitter today, I'd make sure I'm following Dallas Area Association of Realtors, following Barry Taylor. Barry, are you on Twitter or no? Okay, you're on Twitter. Um, I'd follow um, National Real Estate Associations. I'd follow, um, try to find all the top real estate agents that are out there. Okay, because they're all on, they're all on all platforms. All the top real estate agents are on every single platform. Um, so find them. Hey, <laughs> mm -hmm. Tom Donigan here. Hey, Tom. Um, how are you? I'm good. Good. Listen, I have a Twitter account and it's uh, VA Road King is my handle. And mm -hmm. I've been on there for several years. But what, I've, what I'm finding out lately is that uh, everything is getting extremely political. Yeah. Twitter. And they're, they're uh, editing and uh, blocking people and stuff like this. And so what I've heard about is there's another uh, medium that's called Gab. And yeah. uh, I've okay. talked to a couple people that are looking at that and they are a lot less political and you can say whatever you want to say and you can do whatever you want to do. Okay. And I'm that Twitter is becoming a problem for me and I've been on there for many years. Yeah. VA Road King is my handle. Okay, I want to follow you. No, I think you're right. Um, I have seen the Twitter um, as far as um, it used to be when I first got onto Twitter, like way back when, 2007, 2008. You yeah. really could connect to people and yeah, have conversations, you right? right? And it was so great for that. Now you're right. It's gotten very crowded. It's gotten very political. I like to use Twitter right now for news, um, just to see what's breaking, what people are talking about, what's the national conversation. I do use it for that. I also share tips on there, but I would say if I was in real estate, I would use it for that, but I would, I would check out the Gab, so check that out, because it's good to be on these new platforms, but Instagram would trump Twitter. Yeah. Because what you guys do is so visual, you're selling homes. Um, so I think that Instagram, it's a visual storytelling, and so you know, I think Instagram is a great place. Whether you have listings or not, you can still find um, 
you know, photos to publish. There's, there's a great tool out there. It's called Unsplashed, U-N, and then Splashed with the E-D in the end, Unsplashed. You can get royalty-free photos on there. Um, so if you don't have any listings and you want to put some photos up, look at um, Unsplashed and use some of those photos, you know, to get going. Okay, it's a good, a good tip for you there. Okay, so thanks for, thanks for sharing that. I think that's a good point. It's definitely gotten, it's, it's changed a lot, the Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, gonna keep, it's gonna keep changing though. So that's why I say um, these sites are gonna keep evolving. It's still in its infancy. So um, just know Twitter stories is coming. And I, I believe you're gonna be able soon on Twitter to not only put your post out to everybody, but you can put your post and target it to specific people and groups. So that's something to think about. That's coming soon. They're testing it right now. Okay. But yep. if you had to pick one, I, I or pick pick between Twitter and Instagram. I really like Instagram for real estate agents, and it's, it's a really hot platform right now. Instagram. Yep. Okay. Questions. Questions. Would you say how would you rank um, Instagram and LinkedIn? Uh, it'd be hard for me. Um, if I was in real estate, I, I think I'd have a hard time picking because we know for sure that LinkedIn people are professionals. They have typically jobs and they have money and they have resources. So that one first. And yeah. Then. Yeah. But I, I really do like Instagram. Instagram is one of the top platforms right now. The great thing about LinkedIn though, I can go back to LinkedIn is they don't have any algorithms set right now. So whenever you post everyone who you're connected to and their friends will see your post. Hey, Jennifer. That's a good thing. Yes. Another tip, Tom Donegan. Um, yeah. on, on LinkedIn, what I did was uh, many years ago, I set up some groups. And I've got a group that really has done mm -hmm. well for me over the years. And it is, uh, I graduated Seton Hall University. So I set up a Seton Hall University alumni group. Oh, that's good. I, I get all oh. kinds of people that contact me through that group be, and they want to be in the group. That's brilliant. And over the years, that has been a really, really big thing. So I'm just saying to, to everybody out there, think of the groups that you're in. And yeah. It's a church group. Maybe it's a, uh, uh, I don't know, my group. career or something Hobby like group. that. Hobby group. Yeah. Hobby. And uh, set up a group, and uh, and then you can run the group, and you can figure out who is, who you want to let in, and then you do stuff within the group. So you post things within the group, and then uh, you got a very tight connection. That is a fantastic idea. And while we're on the topic of groups, because you said that's on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yeah. What I would do right now or today, go over to Facebook and create a Seton Hall alumni group, because. Yeah. Facebook's getting ready to change. If you guys haven't gotten it yet, they're getting ready to change the whole platform. And we're just starting to see it roll out with our clients. Um, but guess what it emphasizes? Groups. Yeah, how about that? I yep. think they're copying from LinkedIn, to be yeah. honest. They're gonna emphasize groups. I was, my last trip was out to San Francisco in November and there were billboards everywhere about LinkedIn groups, LinkedIn groups. So, I'm sorry, Facebook groups, Facebook groups. So you wanna get on, create, start, that would be a great idea. Create your own Facebook group. Yeah. Um, because in the new layout on Facebook, <clears throat> it definitely emphasizes groups. Okay. So great, great, great. Okay. And Sue says she personally would not consider Twitter as a source for news. And that's okay. <laughs> you know, we can all, I said, I like it because it's breaking and I can see the pop culture conversation on there because I do work with people globally. Um, I find it a great news source because I see, I see everything from a tsunami and earthquakes to whatever it is breaking before it even hits. So, um, but yeah, find your favorite news sources and, and, and get it there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you, I've got a couple more things bookmarked here. I wanted to show you guys. And then again, if there's something you really want to know to make this the best use of your time, please put it in the chat. Okay. And I'm just looking here. Um, okay. All right, so let's, let me uh, da, 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 share a screen. All right, and we are going to, one second. All right, so going back to Instagram for a second, because I forgot to show you this. Um, you might have seen these. These are called the highlight buttons, 
And so this is an interior designer um, who's, again, whom you want to connect with. You want to connect with interior designers, right? Because their people that follow them love, you know, homes and home decor, et cetera. And so you could really use your Instagram page as a place to really showcase your personality. What events or what associations, excuse me, you belong to. Um, your community, whether it's Reston, Herndon, Great Falls, whatever, you could put that there. Um, maybe there are some vendors that you like to partner with. We could put that there. Maybe over here, instead of the Hamptons where she is, you could put to Virginia Beach or Ocean City. No, you know, things yeah. like that. Have fun with it. And so in my classes, we, you know, we, we do that. We kind of help you think about what highlight buttons would be best for you. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. It's kind of like, it's almost turning in your own personal website. One of the fastest. Oops, someone say something. Uh, someone have a question? Okay, no? Okay. So again, now Libby here, she's a, a top-notch interior designer. When we were talking about mixing personal and professional, she does that here. She talks about webinars that she's partaking in. She shares interior design tips. But then at the same time, she, she shares recipes, she shares um, family photos, et cetera. So our personal and professional lives are blurring in our digital lives. These are our digital lives and they are definitely blurred. It also makes you more relatable when you put both. Okay, so that's, we're in that, we're in that ball game right now where people wanna do business with people they relate to and that they know, like, and trust. So I say you can blend both your personal and professional in all of your social media, okay? Um, so again, I like Instagram because it's just a great visual storytelling and I just love following really interesting people, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna go back and stop. What questions do you guys have for me? I have a couple more things I wanted to talk about, but I wanna stop in our last few minutes together. So Jennifer, um, just talking about um, communications general in terms of style, uh, during the, um, the last couple of months, obviously people have probably been far more active in social media areas than they probably ordinarily would. But um, I wondered whether or not you'd noticed if there was any shift in the way in which people communicated on these platforms? Um, well, there's been a big shift, particularly in the past two weeks. Um, people are being very sensitive, uh, sensitive as to what they're writing, what they're saying, what they're posting. Um, so there's a sensitivity factor out there right now. Um, as you guys might know, there is a, there's a sensitivity, yeah, sensitivity factor out there with regards to masks. A lot of people get turned off when they don't see you wearing a mask. A lot of people get turned on or turned off when they do see you wearing a mask. I mean, it's just, we're divided. So I would say you've got to go you know, just whatever you do, just be aware. If that's your brand, you gotta be just kind of, kind of conscious of those things now. If you're gonna go out there and you're gonna show pictures of you with all your friends arm in arm right now, when we're in a social distance, and trust me, people are doing it, in the social distancing, you gotta be prepared that people are gonna post, what do you mean you aren't wearing a mask? What do you mean you aren't social distancing? Have to be kind of thinking of that. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. I'm just saying, um, it's gotten a little sensitive. Um, I haven't seen much of a shift. I've just seen more people are online and more people are getting comfortable with video. And we are going to, so this is a, another tip, you guys, email is going to start fading away. Um, it, it already is. Um, I don't even know if Barry and you and I even exchanged an email. Oh, maybe we did one. You sent me the link for the Zoom. I don't know if we did or not, but you connected me through um, either text or phone or Facebook or you know one of the platforms. How many of you guys have ever communicated with someone you didn't send an email, but maybe you sent a text or maybe you sent a direct message through Facebook? So we have to start thinking about the young people coming up. If you plan on you know doing this business for another, let's just say five years, the young people coming up, don't do email. 
and no one wants another email in their inbox. But people will respond to a direct message on social media or, in their, or, or a text. So just, um, just be aware of that. Okay. All right. Uh, other questions? Okay. Oops, I hear someone there. All right. So I'm going to go back. Um, let's see. I think I've got a few more things bookmarked here. One second. Okay. We're going to go here. All right. TikTok. Now, I'm challenging myself to finally do my first TikTok this weekend. Um, but this is a real estate agent. His name is um, Charlton Miles. And he's on um, TikTok. And you can see him doing videos of some of the homes that he's done. You guys, anyone want to take a guess at how many people not only have TikTok videos or TikTok accounts, but log into TikTok every day? Anyone want to take a guess? Millions. 800 million. Now, are most of those people between the ages of 11 and 17? Yes. But it's aging up, case in point. Jane Fonda, who's in her 80s, Mae Musk, 72, a lot of leaders out there, Bob Proctor, other people in their 70s and 80s, they're getting on TikTok. Why? Because this is where the new eyeballs are. So I would say people like us, like me, I'm getting on this weekend. It's aging up and your prospects are going to be on there. The other thing is, even if you don't want to do a TikTok, because you do have to be comfortable with video, you have to have a like for music, um, and that's not everybody. But if you want to work with millennials, um, it's a place to be. Know that it's aging up, that more people, 30, 40 and up, are getting on it. Um, but if anything, I'm going to say to you, even if you don't do TikToks every day, which, again, I'm thinking, do I have time for that? I want you to get on TikTok just to know what it is, to see what people are doing. That way, when you're taking, talking to that family that has the teenagers, you can talk about the top TikTokers that are out there. You can at least know what they're talking about. Um, gone are the days where if someone says to you, are you on TikTok? You can, you can at least say, I'm not on it, but I, I do watch it. I do see, I do see what people are doing. Um, so again, you wanna see knowledgeable about all of these things that are happening. And um, this, is a, this is a big happening <laughs> right now. And so um, get on there. And you know what? If anything, you will be blown away by the talent on these platforms. These kids that do these videos are absolutely so creative. And, um, you know, they create these things. And I'm like, wow. You know, so you can get on there and just see what's trending and see what these people are doing. It's a music slash dance. But again, real estate, um, I don't know what these guys are going to do. I haven't pre-screened these. <laughs> just a forwarding. Okay. Though they're dancing, Peter, they're having fun. So um, at least get on here and look at the platform so you can know what it's all about. Okay. All right. So that's TikTok. Eight hundred million people are on there. Okay. The other sites that are on um, that are really popular are Medium. If you like to write. And so Medium is another place that I don't see a lot of agents there. So it might be some place where you can make a name for yourself to be a blogger on Medium, medium.com. Okay. Um, so if you'd like to write, um, that would be a good place. Um, also going back to LinkedIn, LinkedIn has LinkedIn articles. And so you could actually put an article up once a week on LinkedIn. So again, all of this is about staying connected, being a part of the digital platforms that millions are on and showcasing your expertise and staying top of mind. Those are really the four, four reasons why we do all this. And um, it's not going away. It's just gonna keep evolving. And so I wanna open it up in our last few minutes to questions. Any questions? Uh, any issues you guys are thinking, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Okay. Well, good, 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 good. I just want to say thank you and thanks for the reminder about the mindset. Yeah, you're welcome. I just one of the things I said in both my books, I opened it up with 
Social media is only going to work for you if you believe in it. And I believe when I log in every day and I put a post that it just takes one person to see it to potentially change the course of my business. So you have to think of it that way. Every day that you go to log in, you can think, you know what, this could be the day that someone contacts me that's an investor and they want to buy a lot of homes. Okay. That could be my day or I'm going to post this week and this could be that one week that that one person sees my post that wants to sell that 500 acre ranch in Middleburg for 45 million. Okay. Think of it that way. It just takes one set of eyeballs to change the course of your business. Or I'm going to log in today and I'm going to post. And that could be the one day that the editor from the Washington Post real estate section sees my post and writes about me in the newspaper. This is how these things happen. Okay. So good, good, Barry, this was so much fun. I want to thank you for having me and um, I'd love to be back to do more. No, oh, thanks, Jennifer. It's, uh, it's uh, very much appreciated. And I'm sure, uh, you know, whilst there might be uh, some people on here who are probably pretty good on social media, I'm sure that everyone's picked something up. And, yeah. and, uh, and I suspect they'll all be doing TikTok, TikTok over the weekend. I want to see the TikToks. I put my email <laughs> in. <laughs> Do you guys want to stay connected? Hi, everybody. Bye. By the way, notice how Jennifer said she wants to do more. So we need to keep that in mind, Mike. Yeah, love Thanks. it. Already on the calendar, Nancy. <laughs> All right. All right. Excellent. When we can get back to doing live events. Yeah.